What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please go ahead and hit sub. I promise you, you're gonna like this video and all the videos that we've been putting out over the last few years. We drop every single week. So today, looky here, new toys. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, okay? Um, everybody and their mother has done videos on both of these players. Right here, we've got the Pioneer Rev 7, the Tickle Me Elmo, of the DJ controller world, right? Pioneer DDJ Rev 7. Over here, haven't even taken out the box yet. The Rain 1. Rain 1 still in the box. Pioneer DDJ Rev 7. What we're gonna do today, right? We're not really gonna do even an A, B, who's better. We're not gonna really do a gear review. We're going to do the practicalities of using these, one or the other, as a mobile DJ. And how easy is it to get into it if you've been using uh, SX3 maybe, or an older Rain, or Rain 12s, or a Pioneer DDJ1000, and you're thinking about going to one of these controllers that has, what else? The motorized platter, again, which is kind of the hot thing right now. So again, I'm not gonna go through all the bells and whistles and features. There are plenty of people here on YouTube that have made videos ad nauseum about these. Go check out Mojax or go check out Cleveland Terry or somebody else that really went in depth on these players when they first came out. Real talk, I've seen this player, I've played with this player a little bit before and then I, in a moment of selflessness, gave it away on a DJ's vault stream so the people in music sent me another one so I can actually play around with this one instead of sending it right off. This one, I literally just took the zip tie off the actual power cord. Now, DJs, if anybody just had a heart attack or a seizure that this has been sitting in my office for probably two or three weeks and hasn't been turned on yet, it's okay. Take a breather, take a, your, your anxiety medication, calm down and we're gonna, we're gonna look at it together. How about that? Even better, it's gonna be a big old time. So stick around, let's get into it. Okay guys, the first thing I wanna talk about is what it's like right out of the box. Now, I took this out of the box the other day. I've had it set up on this fat set table, not DJing on it, sorry. Uh, but it is styrofoam piece, styrofoam piece, regular box, right? Right out of the box, the platters are actually attached to the unit. Whereas I remember the last time I had these for like one day before I sent it off to the winner, this has a little bit of assembly. So let's take a look now at the rain one and what is needed to get it going as a unit. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about buying one of these or the other. Pioneer, right out of the box, throw it on the table ready to rock. Rain has a little bit of assembly. Let's get into that part. Okay, so we're on the rain one now. Some minor assembly required. These uh, platters here, thought I remembered how to do it. Didn't, had to get out the manual, no big deal. So you basically have these two little, we'll call them nipples and they need to line up with these guys here. So you got these, and you want them to line up here. So I'm just kind of holding the platter like this, and boom, you can feel it go down. And you put your trusty slip mat on top, and then you've got your kind of control records. Got a little push button right here on the side, and you kind of push it down, put it over the spindle, and you can hear it make a slight click. And now they are both ready to go. Let's put some power on the rain one and then uh, fire them up. All right, next thing we do, we're just gonna throw some power to both of them. Rain one, boom, powered up. Rev seven, boom, powered up, looking sexy. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Next thing I wanna do is grab my MacBook Pro, and this is a brand new MacBook Pro. Let's gonna start with the Pioneer, 
DDJ Rev 7. We're gonna do this. Like again, these are right out of the box. I hadn't done anything. I've got Serato installed, obviously on this computer over here. So again, the whole point of this video is like true real world applications, right? So the first thing we've been through is out of the box assembly. We know that the Rev 7 has none. We know that the Rain 1 has just a little bit. You gotta get the platters out of the box. You gotta put on the slip mat and you gotta put on your little control record on the top. Again, two minutes there, nothing here, no big deal so far. All right, let's try and hook it up to a computer and see where this goes. So we're going USB A and we're just gonna go right into our MacBook Pro. So the first thing we're gonna see here, we hook it up, we open up Serato and two windows popped up down in the bottom right. Pioneer DJ, DDJ Rev7 DVF support. Serato DVS expansion is required to use control vinyl and CDs. Interesting, okay. And then Pioneer DJ, DDJ set Rev7 driver update available, install driver. We definitely wanna do that. So I'm on the internet here. I click install driver, driver is in progress. Continue, continue, agree, continue. Install, put my password here, and the installation was successful, close. Okay, so now let's go to here and just see if we can make some noise. So I threw on a song Let's see, to the right deck. I'm gonna hit start, but we don't have any sound. And the top of the controller still says no audio driver. So therefore, something's not right. So let's figure out what's wrong. I'll hit stop. So I'm gonna close out Serato and reopen it because that a lot of times after you install a driver, solve things. In fact, I'm going to do even one step further. I'm just going to go ahead and reboot. So after the reboot, you can see now that it's working because I throw a track over here. The top of this platter now is showing the BPM and also the time remaining. I hit play and at first it wasn't playing through the monitors we've got hanging up here on the wall because when this comes from the box, again, something smart you should know, the trim right up here uh, was turned down. So I turned the trim up a little and we're playing. Sexy graphic up here, loaded another track on the left. We're ready to start DJing. So the next question somebody like me is going to have is how hard is it to relearn to walk? And what I mean by that is, can you go from a Pioneer DDJ-1000, before that I had the SX-3 Pioneer, before that I had an SX-2, before that I had a SX. Like now, motorized spinning platter controller, am I gonna be able to play on this? So a couple things I just noticed before I even try this live, basically on camera at least in front of you guys, is your pitch control is not where it normally is. Basically what Pioneer did is made these as if this was a turntable turn battle style and your pitch control is up here now. That's the main thing I noticed right off the get looking over there at my 1000. Let's see, start button is in a little bit of a different spot as well. It's normally left of the platter and left of the platter. And obviously your hot cues are no longer under the platter. They are here in the center, much like I think their S9 and S11 mixers. That's the main things I see. And so therefore your muscle memory, if you're somebody like me that's used to using Pioneer gear is going to need to be readjusted. I don't know, let's just give it a shot and see what it sounds like. Sky, 
Okay, uh, I needed a little help there, you know. But I will say this, uh, obviously visually, everything is on here. Visually, everything is on here in terms of the waveform. So pretty easy to match up. It's gonna take some getting used to with the pitch control being up here. It's probably gonna get, take some getting used to if you wear headphones and you're used to flipping your cue back and forth. Uh, normally over there, it is right above the uh, up and down faders. And so I just am used to popping that button. It's also uh, hard for me to, I don't play in vinyl mode on those. Uh, so I'm able to touch the top of the platter without stopping the song. I use it to speed it up or slow it down. On this, obviously you kind of have to touch the side or drag the side to speed it up or slow it down. So, I mean, when I'm telling you, it is absolutely, just know this if you go from a controller with the platters that don't spin, especially if you haven't spun vinyl in a long time, I haven't spun vinyl in, I would dare say decades, you're going to need to give yourself a learning curve. This is not a take it out of the box, show up at the gig and rock a party type controller. Just, I'm, neither one of them are. So I'm not knocking these things. They're awesome, they're gorgeous. They're super well built, they're gonna kick ass, but you better practice and you better know how to play on one of these or at least on turntables before you go out and do this live. I hope that makes sense, all right? Let's keep it moving. Okay, before we talk about the Rev7 from Pioneer anymore, let's go over and do the same thing that we did on the Rev7 on the Rain 1, right? So I'm just gonna simply take my USB out of here and I'm gonna bring it right over to the back of the Rain 1. Same thing, they got a USB A, USB B. I'm gonna plug that in. <laughs> And what do you know? Same type of error message pops up in the lower right corner. We've got the Rain 1 DBS support, which we don't need. We'll close that blue window out. I said close. And then look, Rain 1 driver update available. We need that. Install driver, continue, install, password, installing, quickly, yep, close. And then I'm gonna do what I didn't do over here, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of Serato, yes. And I'm going to restart the machine. Okay, the reboot is complete. Serato is open. It looks like it's picking it up. We're gonna drop a track on the left deck here. We're gonna make sure the gain's up. We are going to make sure the main is up. We'll just put it at 12 o'clock. Let's see. All right, we're playing. So this controller, the Rain One, is completely different laid out, as you can tell, from the Rev7. If you're, again, used to Pioneer, and again, I, I know I keep looking off camera, but I'm looking over at the one here in the uh, command center that I usually stream from, which is also the same unit that I take out on 99.9% .9 of my mobile shows. It is very similarly laid out to that player. Why? Because you've got your platter, platter, your eight hot pads under it, and then to the left side of the platter, you have your start and stop button. Of course, on the Pioneer DDJ 1000, you have a start and a cue button, which is how I've been DJing for so long that, again, that's what's going to make this jump, I guess, if you will, a little bit difficult. Again, it is learning to walk again. Keep that in mind before you just try and go out there and start dropping absolute train wrecks on the world, all right? Please don't do that, <laughs> okay? Same thing, might as well give it a shot. Right out the box. So, okay, on beat, came the phrasing was all wrong, but it was on beat, and that, to me, as a Pioneer DDJ1000 slash SX3 user for the past, 
geez, I don't even know, six years, five years, however long those, those units have been out, was easier because, like I said before, the layout of the buttons is very similar to a Pioneer DDJ-1000. Whereas this, the Rev7, is not. This is, if you've been using an S9 or an S11, and especially if you're still using your turntables, your techniques, turn battle style, this is gonna be super easy for you. If you've been on Pioneer, ironically, this rain unit is probably gonna be easier for you. It certainly is for me. Before I wrap this video up, I wanna show you some of the other things on each of these players that I really like after I'm sitting here messing around with it for the last few minutes. Um, Jeb's here shooting kind of over my shoulder. Uh, so again, you see the layout of the buttons, very similar to the 1000, uh, even down to the cues being here on the left and the right channels. I love um, this, uh, what I call strip search up here. Um, this was on the SX3 where you can kind of skip to different parts of the songs. Um, it's really good for me as somebody that's not uh, Mr. Hot Q and doesn't always do the best job of setting up hot cues. Love that. Love the uh, stop time here. So you can adjust the, the brake speed, which is usually internal on Serato. You've actually got that there. Uh, another thing that I noticed that I really uh, am in love with is on the pitch control. I love, and some people hate this, especially house DJs I think hate it. I love that little tick in the middle. Like I love to know that I'm reset in the middle. You can just kind of feel it right there in the middle. I love, love, love that. I think house DJs, if I'm not mistaken, hate that. Uh, crossfader, I'm not a scratch DJ, so doesn't really matter, but it is super, I mean, you could see like if I was like Mr. Krabby, uh, it is super, super loose, flexible, sexy. Those are the main things I like. Like where the hot cues are, love where the regular cues for your headphones are, your uh, effects buttons are in the middle here above your paddle flippers. I'm you know, not super accustomed to these, but basically you can lock the effect on or you can just kind of let it go, dit, 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 let it go. Um, also, they are available on the Rev7 as well. Um, most of the stuff down here uh, by your waist, if you will, you've got your mic one and mic two, and then the contour for your decks, your crossfader contour, and then of course your uh, cue controls for your headphones, and then they give you both an eighth inch and a quarter inch out. Again, taking a look at the back of the Rain One, Another couple of super sexy features right here. Mic one and mic two have what? Balanced ends, which is super sexy, XLR ends. You got another aux in, like if you wanted to run an RCA to an eighth inch for like a iPod backup. If you wanted to add some more decks, you could do that. Even got a ground here in case you wanted to add turntables to this beauty. Look, they even have RCA main outs, which is pretty rare. Um, the XLR outs are balanced outs for not only the main, but check this out, for the booth as well. That's also super rare. If you need to have two laptops hooked up, whether one's a backup or maybe your homie is DJing right after you, you got USB A and B. Uh, you've even got your motor torque right back here. I didn't even notice that before. And then it looks like a little exhaust fan or intake fan to cool it off. And then a really nice power button. So those are the things that I'm really digging on the rain one let's take one more look at the rev 7 before we do this final test that i think is kind of important all right here we go okie dokie back on the pioneer ddj rev 7. a few things that i really like on this as you saw probably earlier in the video the tops of the platters have this uh super cool l e d l c d display um and again bpm is here you can see it get faster or slower as you move up and down and your time remaining. If I'm not mistaken, somebody can tell me in the comments. I think you can put the cover art up here. Again, they also have the break time for the, the player. Adjustable up here and not internally, which I really like that as well. I just noticed this, like, this is really kind of an interesting thing. And again, I'm not uh, a, I know this sounds weird as a YouTuber. 
I rarely ever watch other people's YouTube videos. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so I never really watched any videos on either of these things. I would rather just kind of learn, jump right into the fire. Um, this instant scratch thing is kind of cool. It basically kicks the track out and then it goes to these like scratch samples on these four different pads. See, you can tell I just can't scratch. Ragoza would be mad. Or you can kind of kick it back in and go to the song. So you would have that on one deck. Bop, 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 bop. Maybe a beat on this track. Just a quick scratch sample, like thrown right in there. Um, let's see what else. Uh, this, again, if you're a DJ that likes your smoothness of your uh, pitch fader to just kind of run without having that notch in the middle, this is the player for you. Uh, these are nice because you can load tracks right up here from the top. Just click it and pop it to whichever deck. Again, going back to these paddle faders, uh, this is just a echo effect. You can either lock it on or just give it like a little touch. Again, Q is going to be on top. Here on the front, you've got an aux in and then what you want it to be, whether it's a line or portable, you've got your volume adjustment there. You've got your curve for your up and down faders here and here. You've got your cross fader feeling adjust and curve here. And if you're a reverse player or a reverse DJ, and then your mic controls for this, just like on the Rain One, are on the far left by your left leg, uh, your levels, and then a low, a high EQ. And then they've even got a mic and then a talk over or on button here. Okay, and finally, taking a look at the back. Uh, as always, Pioneer's master is XLR. They also do include, check it out, an RCA. And then as always, I'm never a fan of this really, but the booth out is a quarter inch. USB A and B again, if you need to hook up two laptops, then you have the ability to have a few more ends. You have an aux in, like if you want to run an iPad or some kind of a backup device. And then again, if you had turntables you wanted to put on each side of this, you've also got the ability to put those in and ground them. Your mic inputs are different from the Rain One in that one is quarter inch and the other one is XLR. And they have look uh, looks like a little attenuation knob beside each of those, which is kind of interesting. And then of course, power and your cable. This cable is different in that the Rain One is an actual IEC, the one that looks like a little house is what I call it. Uh, so another difference there, but there's the two. Okay. So here's kind of one of my final tests. I want to do a weigh-in. Why? Because I think weight matters, especially if you're carrying in a pre-assembled DJ booth or a road case that's loaded with a controller and maybe a mic or two. Weight matters, you know, especially if you don't have a crew or you go out by yourself like I do a lot of times. So I kind of want to weigh both of these guys and just see what we've got. Let me wake this guy up. All right. So I'm going to put the Rev 7 up here first. 23.9 pounds. Again, 23.9 pounds. Okay. Next up, Rain 1. All right. This guy is saying 24.4. So the weigh-in was not what I expected. I'll be honest with you. I thought the Rain 1 was going to be considerably heavier than the Rev 7. It's not. They're almost identical in weight. Let's just, let's call it 24 pounds to be fair, okay? And plus we're using a human scale and we don't even know if that's accurate. Okay, so let's wrap this thing up. This was a beast of a video. I had a ton of fun messing around with these controllers. To be completely honest with you, once the camera stops rolling, I'm gonna sit here probably for the next hour or two and keep going back and forth between them, trying to decide which one to keep and which one to give away. Actually, now that I think about it, somebody already won this one. I know I've got to give this one away. I'll probably give this one away as well. Who knows? 
But I cannot and will not pick a clear winner today because it's not possible. It is simply going to be a matter of what you are comfortable with, what you like, what features you like and don't like, what hookups on the back you like and don't like, um, which knobs by your waist are you comfortable with and not comfortable with, how the platters feel when they spin, how the sides feel. It's not a weight thing, obviously, which is kind of surprising to me. It is all going to be about placement of buttons and feel. <laughs> the hard thing is, it's probably hard to go see these somewhere like a Guitar Center or Sam Ash with the way the supply chain is. And it used to be so easy, you know, to walk into your local gear dealer and see both of these and they'd even have MacBooks set up and you could sit there and play with them for an hour, you know, and decide, okay, do I like this better or do I like this better? And then you could make your whatever $1,600 purchase. It's not like that now. I'm very fortunate and that, well, let's be honest. I think I paid for both of these. I'm not exactly <laughs> a big time YouTuber. Uh, but I bought them <laughs> because I wanted to make videos about them and because I usually give stuff away inside the DJ's vault for certain anniversaries and whatnot, which I did. But I've been very fortunate in that they're both here at the same time for me to be able to play with and really open up and do this right here in front of you guys. I'm never going to be the review guy. I'm never going to go into the intricacies of, you know, the, the, the different knobs and buttons and this, that, and the other. It's just not what I do. To me, I like my videos to be very much like you are, where you open the box and you wanna start playing, and that's exactly what I hope I accomplished today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Leave a comment down below about which one you're using or which one you're thinking about buying. Let me know what else you really like in these different players down below, and I always respond to those comments myself. Once again, I appreciate you guys watching. Back again next week with another brand new video. Peace.